Okay, folks. First things first. Tomorrow and day after, on the 8th and the 9th, we are holding a very important conference in the department that is on issues in agriculture, food security, and poverty. These are, of course, very important areas. Some of the country's top agricultural economists are going to be there in that conference to present papers. The conference will be at the ICSSR hall from 10 o'clock in the morning. There will be no lectures tomorrow, right? Okay, except the first nine o'clock lecture like that. But but you have to be there for the conference. Yeah, the nine o'clock lecture will be there. You then no lectures means it's not for you to bunk classes tomorrow. Yeah, so you have a lecture from nine to ten, but subsequently all of you are expected to be there at the conference. There will be there will be an attendance taken. Yeah. Okay, all those who don't come will be called to my office for a dressing down. So, all those who don't come will be called to my office later on and talk to. So, please avoid that. Attend the conference. It's a good, good learning experience. It's a series of papers. Yeah, and the next day it's at 1 o'clock. But you can listen to some papers which are of interest to you. But at least listen to the inaugural address by Professor Y.K. Alak. Uh, it's a, he's a very well-known economist and uh, you learn a lot from uh, uh, from what he says, right? Okay. Now, yesterday we learned, <coughs> yesterday we were looking at a simple AR1 process. We didn't look at an AR process, right? If you remember, we looked at YP. Think of this. This is an AR1 process <coughs> This is an AR2 process In general you can think of which is an ARP process, right? So we learned about two things yesterday. We learned about an autocorrelation function and we learned about a partial autocorrelation function. So think of a stationary ARP process. How will the autocorrelation function of an ARP process behave? How does the autocorrelation function of a stationary AR process behave? Yeah, how does the autocorrelation function of a stationary air process behave? We talked about it yesterday, didn't we? It slowly tapers off. It tapers off, right? Not really slowly, it tapers off. As J increases, as you go more and more to the future, the autocovariance covariances, autocorrelations fall. Right? So if you look at say J500, you still get some autocovariances, but they will be very small. Right? Even if it's an AR7 process. Autocovariance at AR8, AR9, AR10, AR11, AR12 will exist, but they keep on becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. On the other hand, we also learned about the partial autocorrelation function. Yeah? So how will the partial or what do you mean by partial autocorrelation? The direct correlation. Yeah? So here you have direct correlation between yt and yt minus 1 only. Though yt is correlated with yt minus 2 because yt minus 2 affects yt minus 1 and yt minus 1 in turn affects yt the correlation is not direct so here you would have partial autocorrelation only of order 1 here you would have partial autocorrelation only of order 2 here you would have partial autocorrelation of order p right so if a stationary arp process the autocorrelation function will taper off will slowly become really dampen out either this way or in a cyclical fashion and so on. The partial autocorrelation values will be non-zero till or lag p and subsequently they will all be zero. Is this clear? So for an ARP process, stationary ARP process, the autocorrelation function tampons off. The partial autocorrelation function are, are non-zero till order p 
and are zero subsequently. Is this clear? Okay. Now, AR processors are the only kind of processor, not the only ways in which you can conceptualize a statistical model, okay, a time series model. Another way of conceptualizing time series model is to say the following. Okay. Think of yt. Think of yt as say alpha, right? Plus, plus, or say just just think of it like this. Say theta <coughs> e t minus one plus where? E t and E t minus 1 are white noise processes. So we are assuming that the E t's are uncorrelated with their pass and present future values, have mean 0, constant and, and a constant variance, etc. etc. Right? So here we are conceptualizing Y t as the last period shock into a constant, okay, plus a fresh current period shock. So what is Y t? Take the shock received the last period multiplied by a constant, add to it a current period shock and that sum you call y. This is called a moving average process. Okay, for example, this will be a MA1 process, moving average process of order 1. Okay, if you think of yt is equal to say theta1 et minus 1 plus theta2 et minus 2 plus et, what would you have? An MA2 process, a moving average process on it. Okay? Sure? Now we are going to think of something very important. Is this clear what's a moving average process? So the current value of yt is not the past value of yt into a constant plus a random shock, but the current value of yt is a current period shock plus a past period shock into another constant plus the past period, the, the one before that into a constant and so on. Sure? Is this clear? Right? Okay, for example, in my frog game, if you remember the frog game, the frog jumps to the right, my shock is plus one, frog jumps to the left, my shock is minus one. So my, if my current earnings are <coughs> what I earned in the last period, plus say each, suppose each period whatever I get, I give 50% of it away to charity. Right? So what I get in this, so what my earnings in the current period are ET plus say theta ET minus one. Right, so I have, a, I have an MA1 process. Okay, I have an MA1 process. Okay, sure? Is this right? Now, first let's think of stationarity for an MA process. Do you think stationarity will be a relevant consideration for an MA process? We talked about AR process, we said for an AR1 process, if the absolute value of phi is less than 1, then phi is a stationary process, weak sense stationary process. Do you think the same restriction will apply to an MA process? Do you think for an MA process, theta has to have a particular value or MA processes or what? First, what are the three conditions for stationarity? The mean should be constant, the variance should be well defined and the covariance should depend only on the, the, the gap between the two observations and not on time. So first, what is the expected value of yt? Theta, yeah, sure, right? What is expected value of ET minus one? What is ET? ET is a white noise process. So what's the expected value of ET minus one? Zero. So this is zero plus zero is equal to zero. So mean of YT is constant. Sure. If I had another constant here, alpha. The mean would have been alpha, right? So, irrespective of the value of theta, irrespective of the value of theta, the mean of y t is constant in this case. Either zero in this case or alpha. What do you think is the variance of y? What do you think is the variance of y? What do you think is the variance of y? How do you find the variance of x? Expectation of x, x minus expectation x whole square. So you have expectation of yt minus 
expectation yt whole square. Correct? What is the expectation yt? Zero. So this is equal to expectation of theta et minus 1 plus et square. Right? Which will be what? Variance of this plus the variance of this plus two covariance. Right? The covariance part is zero. So the variance of this plus the variance of this. What is the variance of theta et minus 1? Theta square sigma square. So this would be theta square sigma square e plus sigma square e is sigma square e into 1 plus theta square. Right? Whatever the value of theta, this is a well defined quantity. Even if theta is 7 for example, this is fine for quantity for a variance. Sigma square e into 1 plus theta square. So whatever the value of theta, this quantity is, well, is well defined. So it satisfies the second condition for stationary. What do you think is the third condition for stationary? Covariance should not depend upon t, right? So we want covariance say yt, yt minus 1 is expected value of yt minus expectation yt into, yeah? Right? This is 0, this is 0. So this is expectation of yt into yt minus 1. Which is what? Which is expectation of theta et minus 1 plus et into theta et minus 2 plus et minus 1. Is this clear? Because yt minus 1 will be theta et minus 2 plus et minus 1. yt minus 2 will be theta et minus 2 plus et minus 1. Sure? Okay. Now if you find the covariance, what will you get? First you will multiply throughout. You will get et minus 1 into et minus 2, whose expected value will be 0 because that covariance is 0. Right? You will get et minus 1 into et minus 1, so theta et minus 1 square, yeah. whose expected value will be theta sigma square e, right? et into theta et minus 1, et minus 2, that covariance will be 0, et into et minus 1, that covariance will be 0, so the answer will be theta sigma square e, which also doesn't depend upon t. Sigma square is a constant, theta is a constant. So the point is, if you have an MA process, it is by definition stationary. All MA processes are stationary. By default. Right? So, what is the corresponding condition for an MA process? For, for example, for an AI process, we had a condition for stationary. Right? And what did we say? Why did we require the condition for stationarity? Because if that condition was not satisfied, if theta is not equal to 1, you had expectation yt, variance yt, covariance yt, yt was not well defined at all because they were infinite sums which did not add up to a finite quantity. Is there a corresponding condition for an MA process? The important question that, Yes, madam? No, no. One minute is only. Okay. But will you do that? What is to be done? Okay. Right. You do, so, so what is the corresponding condition for an MA process? Okay. See, first thing to realize is that AR processes and MA process are not different processes. The same AR process can be written as an MA process. To take an example, we know that if I have a station